Hello and welcome to your Puncty Bite for the first full week of February. Um, we're going to have a great week this week as we'll be going into the tea streaking week. Um, and yes, I am driving in the car on the way home from a ski race. We were in Frisco this weekend where my athletes kicked ass. And yes, I had the chance to race too. It was pretty sweet. Um, and just for the honor of James, I am wearing my honey badger hat because it's distinctly similar to a Muppets hat. And so I might. I might break out into a Muppets dance at any moment today. Okay, let's begin by looking at the schedule. As I said, we're headed into the first week of February, and we're going to start off the week with some wild streaking. So we'll be doing tea streaking lab six on Monday and Tuesday, and then lab seven on um, later in the week on Wednesday and Thursday. Of course, for Craig, Katie and Craig, you guys are going to be running on ahead of us um, having already done your streaking extravaganza. So uh, I'll try to say just a brief word about Lab 8 for the two of you. Notice that Aaron and Leslie are signed up for Open Lab, and that's because I made this schedule prior to Chelsea taking Leslie's place in that lab. So Chelsea, if you would rather be the one to take that Open Lab, um, we can do that any way that you would like. Uh, just, you know, again, make sure that we have coverage for that day. Also, for those of you who are paid TAs, please do remember to go down and uh, submit your timesheet. I don't think I've signed very many timesheets lately, so make sure you're getting those hours uh, turned in and that you're getting the pay that you deserve. And boy, do you deserve that pay. You guys have been killing it. Uh, I've seen so many amazing lectures lately and um, really just a phenomenal job. I saw most of you incorporating some of the suggestions that I gave last week. And I know that you've been busy lately having go, uh, gone through the grading or many of you starting the grading of the Graham Stain Report. So I wanted to begin by talking just a little bit about that. In terms of... Um, your plan for grading. Many of you are very experienced TAs and you've done this many times before so I don't necessarily have new words of wisdom for you but when you do deconstruct your rubric and you're trying to give points in a, in a, a sort of um, equivalent way to all of your students make sure that you do add to your rubric um, because for example uh, it might be that you're grading the introduction of this report and you come to a report that does state a hypothesis, but you don't feel as though that hypothesis is testable. So of the one point that's given for the hypothesis, you might deduct half a point because the, the hypothesis is not testable. And so if you do that, make a note to yourself, and that way you can be consistent across the board with deducting that half a point for every student that has the same mistake. Um, the same is, is really true throughout. Um, sometimes I find that it's easy, easiest to, um, to look at tiny parts of any section and add up what you think would be the point total for that. And then maybe it's like you feel like there's 80 points that you could have potentially gotten for the materials and methods section. Um, and you look for each one of those and then you, you take it as a fraction of that four points that are available for that section. That can sometimes be an effective way to go about things. Um, please do make sure for me that their illustrations in the lab report are of their own creation. Yes, some of the students came in and took a, a awesome photos with the um, inverted microscope and that was sweet, but make sure that those aren't photos that they've taken off of the internet. Um, that's not an illustration of their their gram stain. And I've realized that's the thing we really need to work on the most is the process of accurately observing your gram stain, right? Ac accurately writing down observations about your gram stain, whether it's a good stain or a bad stain, it's the biggest part of science is accurately describing that stain no matter the quality. So let me know as you're grading if you have questions. I know I've already talked to some of you. I know Alex was at work with this and many of you, it was so awesome to see so many of you in open lab. Um, you guys are just, you guys rock my world really. Okay, let's go on and talk about some of the labs we'll be doing this week. And we'll start off with lab six. So for most of you, that's the lab we'll do on either Monday or Tuesday. 
and yes, we get to go streaking. So I want everyone to be ready to demo the tea streaking method. Um, you might find helpful to watch Virtual Edge. Uh, we will begin the day um, not with the tea streak demo, but instead by following up on the dilution problems. Um, making sure that the students have done a good job of those calculations. The reason that I have them write them on the board is because I find that if they have to record them, they're much more likely to do a really good job with their calculations. So that's why we uh, do do that that way. Um, and we'll, we'll make sure that everyone is pretty comfortable with things before we move on to lab six. This is a fun lecture to give, and I know that many of you have taken on the challenge. Um, please do ask me if you're unsure about any of the pictures, the photographs that are included in this lecture. Uh, one of the ones of the uh, psychrophilic snow algae is one that I took at ski camp last year, um, and it's really cool because you can see the real red color of the snow uh, created by that algae. So I, I did highlight on here, please, even if you're familiar with the tea streak, Please review it because um, you may have a functional way to get it done, but you may forget to explain some aspect of it. Even though you're doing a good job of your tea streak, you may not be teaching everything that you're doing. So, um, and most of you are really, really good at that. So I think that's most of everything that I wanted to mention regarding lab six. So let's say a few words on lab seven, which I know that some of you have um, taken on the challenge of giving the lecture for Lab 7. That is, is a challenge because it, um, it is a little more in depth of a lecture. You may want to review some of the literature prior to giving that lecture uh, on the uh, bioluminescent bacteria. And um, even before we can jump into the luminescence concepts, uh, we do have a lot of results summarizing to do. Remember that the students um, only did one of each of the environmental influences. So we need to make sure that everybody is getting all of the data for each one of the influences. I will talk about the environmental influences, um, or John will, and then we'll hand it over to you guys if you are doing a lecture. Um, I know that Kelsey was looking into some additional literature in that and getting ready for the lecture. If you did sign up for that one and you're feeling like, hmm, I don't know, um, let me know and we'll talk about it. Okay, so I think that's most of um, what we need to talk about on Lab 7, except for that this is the day of the Pipette Man tutorial. And the students do need to make sure that they complete and submit that tutorial uh, sometime during the laboratory period. So they need to actually hand it in that day. And I find that it's not that they're not wanting to hand it in, sometimes they forget to hand it in, so if we can just help to remind them before they go, uh, that would be absolutely marvelous. Okay, let's look at Lab 8. Um, this will be just a forecast for most of you, except for uh, Katie and Craig, you'll be doing this um, this week. So uh, with Lab 8, there's a lot going on, and so I find it's helpful to split the students up so that no one station becomes overly populated. Um, the lecture is straightforward, but it's full of information. So it's important to um, make sure that students are taking home the messages from each different section, whether it be UV or antibiotics um, or antimicrobial resistance. The last one is maybe one of the more important and harder to understand. And so I wanted to make sure that everyone plans um, a good discussion regarding antimicrobial sensitivity um, and resistance um, because a lot of times students don't understand that it's bacteria that become resistant to antibiotics. It's not people that become resistant. So even just the other day I was talking to one of my students and she said, so for people who are resistant, and it's not people being resistant, it's, it's the bacteria causing the infection that are resistant. So we need to understand um, selective pressure, right, and putting bacteria under selective pressure and that that's how we're selecting for the resistance and it's the bacteria not the people. So there's some simple com concepts that you guys began understanding a long time ago that may be necessary to re-explain to the students. Once we've gotten through the lecture for Lab 8, um, you'll want to go ahead and man the UV station and you can choose maybe one of the TAs will want to man this station um, specifically because students forget to take the lid off of their plate before putting it under the UV light. Um, so uh, I think that pretty much covers everything for the week um, and 
I, my, my Muppet dance is abysmal, but um, <laughs> have a wonderful day.